Amazon's Project Kuiper debut. Can it rival SpaceX Starlink? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning. I'm coming to the end of some misty morning. That zing, that bergamot. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea. Talking tech, space, SpaceX, and of course, some Linux. Today we're going to be talking about SpaceX and Project Kuiper, Amazon's version, let's say, of SpaceX Starlink. Jeff Bezos is trying to compete with Elon Musk because it's a billionaire kind of thing. That's what we do. Um, Jeff Bezos also has a rocket company like SpaceX and Elon Musk, and it's called Blue Origin. The problem is, is Blue Origin hasn't placed a single satellite of his on orbit. When I say his, I'm talking about Project Kuiper, this new, once again, let's call it SpaceX Starlink that he's creating. Now, I did a live about this just a couple of days ago, and it was the inaugural flight, and they did launch 27 of these Project Kuiper satellites, which is a big thing. That means that they are getting started. They are starting at 27. Currently, SpaceX Starlink has about 7,200, a few more. But that's okay. At least they're starting. We want to see competition. But the question was, will Amazon's Project Kuiper be a rival to Elon Musk, SpaceX, Starlink? And I've stated this in the past and I will state it once again. I do not believe it will be because I don't think the math adds up. But we'll get into that before the end of this video. I was reading an article over on Tesla Roddy and a couple other places. I want to read some of it for you because I think it's interesting. Because this way you'll get an understanding of what is going on with Project Kuiper. And when you read all of these rags and listen to mainstream media that's stating all of these facts about them being a direct rival or direct competitor to SpaceX, hopefully by the time you're done watching this video, you will understand the truth. So before we get started, I just want to say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, thank you so much. Click this notification button over here so when I go live when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more SpaceX Starlink specific content, I put together a playlist just for you. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. Click on this link when you're done watching this video and you'll find about 470 plus, 470 plus helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it, as I always say, because the why is more important than the how, in my personal opinion. Amazon's Project Kuiper launched its first 27 satellites on Monday, marking the start of a $10 billion effort that could compete with SpaceX Starlink with a global broadband internet network. Amazon's Kuiper satellites launched aboard a ULA or United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida. That's right up the road from me. Project Kuiper's recent launch is an initial step towards deploying Amazon's 3,236 satellites for low Earth orbit connectivity. Amazon's satellite launch was initially set for April 9th, but due to bad weather, it ended up launching a couple of days ago on the 28th. Now that Kuiper satellites have been launched, Amazon is expected to publicly confirm contact with the satellites from its Mission Operations Center in Redmond, Washington. I haven't heard from them as of yet. The company aims to start offering Kuiper service to customers later this year. Not possible. Project Kuiper was unveiled in 2019 and targets consumers, businesses, and governments who need reliable internet service similar to SpaceX Starlink. Germany's military plans to build Starlink alternative by 2029. That's a very interesting statement there. 2029, Germany is looking to build something similar. Well, we'll see how that works out. Amazon has a deadline from the U.S. Federal Communication Commission, or the FCC, to deploy 1,618 satellites by mid-2026. Analysts suggest the company may require an extension to its Kuiper satellite deployment deadline due to the project's year-long delay from its planned start in 2024. ULA, or United Launch Alliance, could conduct up to five more 
Remember that. Five more Project Kuiper missions this year, according to ULA CEO Troy Bruno. Amazon noted in 2020 FCC filing that Project Kuiper's service could begin with 578 satellites, initially covering northern and southern regions. Project Kuiper's launch pits Amazon against SpaceX Starlink and telecom giants like AT&T and T-Mobile with a focus on underserved or unserved rural areas. Quote, there's an insatiable demand for the internet, Amazon's executive chairman Jeff Bozo, or excuse me, Jeff Bezos, told Reuters in January. Quote, there's room for a lot of winners there. I predict Starlink will continue to be successful, and I predict Project Kuiper will be successful as well. Global interest in satellite alternatives is rising. Ukraine is exploring Starlink alternatives with European Union or the EU, driven by concerns over Elon Musk. Germany's military, the Bundeswehr, also plans its own constellation to ensure independent communication. However, like Amazon's Project Kuiper, EU options lag behind SpaceX Starlink. Amazon consumer experience and cloud computing infrastructure gives Project Kuiper a competitive edge despite SpaceX Starlink's market lead. That is also the case. They do have a massive infrastructure when it comes to cloud. As Project Kuiper ramps up launches, its success could reshape broadband access while challenging SpaceX Starlink's dominance in satellite internet race. Well, there is some problems that go on here, and I've talked about this in the past, and I want to bring it to your attention because, once again, a lot of the mainstream media and a lot of the articles that you read, besides this one, but this is pretty straightforward, but a lot of them will tell you how Elon Musk is going to have this mass competition with Jeff Bozo, excuse me, Jeff Bezos over there and his Project Kuiper. And the bottom line is, is the math just simply doesn't work out. I've done the math and I've taught you guys about this during the launch when I did this live and it just, it just can't. It just absolutely can't. So why do I say this? They just launched 27 satellites. So they have 27. SpaceX Starlink has about 7,200. That's fine. Just forget about the 7,200. They're starting out with 27 satellites. What they said, what they stated in this article is kind of telling. They stated that they can only do five more launches this year. Five more launches for Project Kuiper. This is ULA or United Launch Alliance. Five more. That is a problem because if you think about it, these 27 that are already there, they're only going to end up with a total of about 252 if they're able to get all of those five launches to happen. Well, that's going to give them a total of 1,366 short. <laughs> Remember, they have a deadline as of, what is it, July? I think it's the end of July of 2026. So let's say 15 months from now or so. They have this deadline where if they pass that deadline, they're going to get fined or they're gonna lose their license completely to launch these things at all or to use them. So they're gonna end up having to push this back no matter what. That is just, all analysts say that there's no way for them to make it. But let's just say, let's once again, let's do the math. So if they did those five more, even if they did seven more and launched two more into the next year or three more, they're just, they're still going to be 1,000, 1,300, 1,200 off. It just can't happen. What they did state in this article, let me get the exact number, I think it was like 500 or 400 and something. Let me see. Yeah, 578. They stated 578. This was back when they initially put in the FCC filing. 578 will be enough for them to go, let's say, live with a beta test of this service. The math that I did, 578 is just not going to do it because they're going to have less than 90% uptime, probably be like about 85% uptime just in Florida, just doing the math for here alone. So you really can't offer a beta service with that little satellites and, and have less than 99% uptime where people are just going down 10% of the time, 5%. People, just, they're just not going to deal with that. I mean, even beta testers are going to be like, I don't know, this is just, this is a lot. So can they do it? Well, if they were able to get that 578 up, yeah. But the thing is, is once again, doing the math, they can only get 200 and what did I say, 52? That's it. So they're still like halfway there. They don't have enough to be able to go live like they said they were this year. And I, I said this from like last year. I said there's no way doing the math that they can actually go live in 2026 20, even. 
Forget about 2025. They originally wanted to go live with beta in 2025. That's never going to happen. I think in 2026, it's possible, but it'll probably be towards the end. That's my personal opinion. So how can they fix this? What can they do? Now, remember that they have contracts with ULA. They have contracts with Arian Space. They have contracts with their own, with his own company, which is Blue Origin. And they have contracts with, probably one, <laughs> with... SpaceX, because obviously he does not want to use any of Elon Musk's rockets if he doesn't need to. I don't blame them. He has a very large chip on his shoulder and it's very hard to kind of flick off. And I get it. But once again, the math doesn't work out. Doing the math, what I figured out was that even if SpaceX was to come on board and let's say ULA was able to launch seven instead of five. OK, seven. We're, we're going to help them out a little bit. That means every single month they're going to have another one. We'll see what ends up happening with that. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But let's just say SpaceX has to be commissioned for 20 or 21 launches. And that's stuffing in a maximum load capacity of 60 satellites in every one of the fairings at the top of Falcon 9. Now, is that going to happen? Absolutely not. That's like one and a half per month for the next 15 months or whatever, they're not going to put them on the schedule that often. I don't think that'll happen. I really don't. And that's if Jeff Bezos actually begs Elon for all of that ride share to place his satellites on orbit. So they will absolutely not be able to get to the 1,618 satellites out of the totality of 3,236 that are going to be on orbit, according to what Jeff Bezos says. So they're just not going to get there. That is just simply it. And once again, when you hear all of the mainstream media and you hear all of these rags and you start reading things that says that, yes, Jeff Bezos's Project Kuiper is going to be the competitor and it's going to go live sometime by the end of 2025, that is a fallacy. There's no way for that to happen. When you start reading that it's going to go live the first half of 2026, yet another fallacy that will not happen. When you start reading that it'll go live by the end of 2026, that could happen, but they're going to need help. That's just, that's just it. They're going to need help. They're not going to be able to do it just with ULA. They're going to need like their new Glenn to actually do something. All right. And put those satellites on orbit. They're going to need something. They're going to need help. And if they don't commission SpaceX for the help for those 20 or 21 plus ride shares, it's just simply not going to happen even by the end of 2026. I hope this helps to, I guess, give you an understanding of what is possible and what is not possible. And when you read and when you see these articles, you could kind of take it all with a grain of salt, understanding that the math just simply will not work out. I don't care what they do, because the bottom line is they will absolutely not be able to put on orbit the satellites that they need to that the FCC requires, number one. Number two, they will not be able to have that 578 or whatever they're stated on orbit anytime this year for there being any type of beta testing for you or I to do. And I don't believe that'll happen by the first two quarters of next year either. That's my personal opinion. I could be wrong. Once again, the only thing that can save them is SpaceX or possibly New Glenn. And that is also far-fetched. And even if New Glenn was to be able to fly, it's not going to fly more than once a month anyway. So the number of satellites will still be limited. But we'll see what ends up happening. I will report back to you guys because I find this stuff interesting. So as I always say, I really do want to see competition. Competition with SpaceX is really, really good because competition breeds iteration and then finally innovation. Innovation is what we're all looking for. That's going to progress the satellite communication networks out there, the internet speeds. Once again, we're going to start seeing gigabit speeds. We're going to see latency dropping below 20 milliseconds. That's just amazing from space. Some people don't know this, but the Project Kuiper satellites will be sitting right above SpaceX Starlinks. So Project Kuiper will be at about 600 kilometers, whereas Starlink are about 530, 520 right around there. And some of the SpaceX Starlinks are going to come down into the 300 kilometers, making them faster and lower latency closer to the Earth. So we'll see what ends up happening with Project Kuiper here. I'm going to keep watching it and I'm going to report back to you and hopefully give you an unbiased look at it. Obviously, I'm not a fan of Jeff Bezos over there, but still, I'm going to report on this and I'm going to tell you the truth of what's going on and once again, do the math because the math doesn't lie. Mainstream media news and a lot of the rags 
They do. They just fluff things up that really shouldn't be. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope this helped. If you enjoyed the content, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, thank you so much. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch, my tees, my shirts, my books, and everything else over there. If there's something there you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, maybe with Project Kuiper one day, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.